Welcome to the Yuri Gamer Show. Ah, I see you're back on your two feet. Yeah, I had the weirdest hangover last week. I couldn't remember anything, and then I couldn't get the taste of cat food out of my mouth. Ah, we are still running with this joke then. Yeah, you should have seen what I originally wrote. Coming up this week. I look at fan remakes that would put the real thing to shame. And Ian puts his fate into the hands of the internet. What could possibly go wrong? But first, Chris has been getting above his station again, talking and having opinions and a background that isn't just a white wall. Love you really, Chris. Hello, so you may have seen a video that we did at the beginning of the month on the swindle and I think it turned out alright to be honest. We had the game's developer involved, Dan Marshall, and it's just a format that I really enjoy. Uh, an extended look at a game with lots of back and forth between myself and the person that made it. But one thing we did kind of miss with that video in particular is that we only really focused on the early game of the swindle. And because of the nature of its upgrade system and the way in which you unlock and access levels, yeah, it changes quite substantially by the time uh, you get towards the end. So I thought today, ahead of its launch next week, we could check out something from slightly further into the game. All right, good. Let's do that. All right then, I'm probably not going to explain too much as we go along, at least not the basics anyways. We kind of covered that in the first video, and this is going to be relatively brief, but I did say we checked something from slightly later into the game. And by that, I mean security level 2, which doesn't sound that far at all. And well, it's not really, but this game gets real hard real quick. Yeah, I'm not going to complete the game this time. Or next time, really. It's it's one of those ones. I think I'm alright with it. But what I'm not alright with is this... Oh god, this drone taking two hits to be killed. That is something you can upgrade, but I just don't have the money. 20 grand sounds like a lot if you look in the top left corner. Nope. Not at all. Ooh, that looks a bit tight. Nope. There's no rush. There's no rush yet. Until you get spotted, you can really take your time, but I just never remember that. One of the new tricks I've got is a double jump, which is super useful. Probably one of the first upgrades you really want to get. Because of the way the levels are generated, actually, there are totally going to be times when you can just get trapped in situations you can't get out of and have to press start and then terminate employee, which... Oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> that, that would have been embarrassing. Anyway, we're hacking the computer. That's where the real big money's at. And look at that, a cool 6K. All right, then. Everything's so difficult now. Remember when it wasn't? Remember, remember security level zero? The slums? Wasn't that a nice time? Quickly now, quickly now. Is there anything over the other side? Nope, I'm all good. Alright, I think... Is that it? That might be everything that I need from this level. It can be hard to tell. Some rooms... Oh, look at that over there. There's something on the left-hand side. There's another room. That I kind of need to have a look at. Just before I go. It's alright, I've got most of what I need so far. So even if I do mess this up... I can get out with with my money fairly easily. Probably. If you die, you lose everything you picked up so far. So let's not die. Now, I see what you're thinking. You see, Chris, what are you doing over here? This is clearly a wall and not something that you can walk through. Well, there is actually an upgrade which allows you to walk through walls, but you could instead just do this, which is called placing a bomb on the wall and then running off rather rapidly. So, that's destroyed a bunch of the level. Alright, this will be the second computer. This is going to be a big payout. That's another almost seven grand. It's a haul of 15,000. This is, this is wonderful. Now, look at this. There's something, might be something up here, but obviously, because I've only got a double jump, instead of a triple or quadruple jump, another upgrade, uh, I can't find out. So let's, let's do this. Let's go back up here, and then let's blow up this boarding over here. And that should give me a way to go and have a look around and see if there's anything cool going on. Okay, what's going on over here? What kind of cool things you got going on? There's another computer there and it's surrounded by spikes and bad things. Ugh. Oh no, I've been spotted. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I'm, I'm gonna leave. Nope, nope. We've got 15 grand. We don't want it. Oh god, look at all the bad things that are happening. The, the police are on the way. By the way, let's, let's not forget that. Cool little action hero moment there. Had to pay for that. Oh no, right. Yep, 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 yep. Again, the airship. And that's the swindle, ladies and gentlemen. I only got 67% of the cash from that mission, probably because I missed that final computer, and I feel like I did really, really well. That's that's why I'm having a bit of a problem, because it's rather difficult. And yeah, if that's your kind of thing, it's out next week. I think it's out on Tuesday for the PS4 and PC, and then maybe the Friday for everything else. Okay, cool. That's it for my bit this week. Back to Johnny and Ether. What time is it? Why, have you got somewhere better to be?
No, I'm just wondering whether the Final Fantasy VII remake is out yet. Ah, well, instead of waiting for that, why not look at this list of fan-made remakes that already exist? Man, our Segway game is strong this week. Resident Evil Reborn's due date is very nearly upon us. The fan-made version developed in Unreal Engine 4 is due to land this summer for free, and it already looks better than any Resident Evil game Capcom has released since Resi 4. Sorry, Chris Redfield. Reborn boasts revamped 3D models, particle effects, reworked lighting, gameplay tweaks, and some new textures and animations. But really, the most impressive thing about it is that someone took the time to remake this entire game in Unreal 4 and in Unity before that. So in honour of this little bit of gameception, here's a bunch of old games that were remade in new games. So it's enough of that, thank you. First up, Black Mesa, one of the titans of this select little subgenre. Black Mesa is a complete reimagining of Half-Life built in the Source engine that's been in development for eight years. Having got Valve's blessing, it hit Steam Early Access in May of this year. In Black Mesa, the environments are updated with gorgeous new textures, accompanied by all new voice acting, music, and even additional dialogue. Put together by a 40-strong volunteer team, it's a pretty impressive labour of love. Just a minute! Of course, Black Mesa owes a good chunk of its existence to the availability of Valve's creative tools like the Source SDK and, of course, Gary's Mod, which has led to loads of weird stuff getting created. Like when Slender was completely remade in Gary's Mod for people who hate sleeping. See, the beauty of these projects is they can be modest, like Slender, or they can be utterly mind-bogglingly massive in scope. Like Sky Oblivion, for example, the mod that dared to dream and recreate Oblivion in Skyrim. And I don't mean patching in the environment either, I mean porting in all the weapons, armour, NPCs and quests. Bringing the whole thing over to Skyrim with an enormous team of volunteers doing it simply because they want to make it happen. Even if you hate the Elder Scrolls with every fibre in your being, you have to admire the drive that made someone get up one day and say, hey, I'm going to take this massive RPG Bethesda released in 2006 and just smash it into the massive RPG Bethesda released in 2011. I wish I loved anything as much as these guys love the Elder Scrolls. Though, of course, not every game remade in a different game is necessarily a fan's passion project. Sometimes the developers themselves get in on the act. For instance, in Donkey Kong 64, you can find an arcade machine that lets you play the original game, which, at the time, blew my tiny mind. <laughs> Bethesda is also pretty keen on this kind of thing, letting you play a retro Wolfenstein sequence with your creepy modern-day hands in Wolfenstein The New Order, and then a bunch of classic levels in downloadable standalone The Old Blood. As cool as these examples are, and with all apologies to Jumpman, there's just something less exciting about a developer porting its own game into a current release. Even though I'm sure it takes a fair amount of work, it just lacks the buzz of passion projects like these. Whether it's putting Morrowind or Oblivion into Skyrim, producing an HD version of the first Shenmue, or even modding Star Wars Battlefront 2 to play like a Mass Effect game, these projects are exciting because putting a modern spin on something we feel nostalgia for, in a way, helps us experience it for the first time all over again. It's historical archiving just for the hell of it. It's fun, it's impressive, and in some ways it's weirdly touching? So, in short, well done to those guys who provide the ultimate fan service, revamping something that people enjoy for the hell of it, rather than making money from their talents, which they could quite easily do. You guys are alright. So a couple of weeks ago, you may remember Ian tried out Rocket League, and it didn't go so well for him. Mm, and then last week, you tried out No Time to Explain, and you were even worse. Yes, I know. Like, really, really bad. Yes, thank you. Like, you, you sucked so bad. I know! Anyway, it's time to see how Ian got on with the new game, Choice Chamber. You suck at games. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a ruddy great television. There are plenty of choices to make in life, but earlier this week I chose not to choose life, I chose to choose Choice Chamber. But did I choose wisely? Well, as a basic side-scrolling platformer, Choice Chamber is nothing special. In fact, on its own, it's a pretty poor game, a rather tedious hit monsters and jump over holes affair with a horrendous clown vomit colour scheme. 
Choice Chamber isn't just a bog standard platformer though, this game was designed from the ground up to work with Twitch. This means viewers have the ability to help or hinder the player's progress by voting on specific game changing modifiers. This in turn increases audience interaction and means that each playthrough is always slightly different. The main problem I have with Choice Chamber though is that the choices are rather limited. There's not enough variation in the enemies, weapons or levels and even worse the types of things you can vote for are super limited so it's not long before the choices start repeating themselves. This makes Choice Chamber get old very quickly, and to be honest, that is not a good trait for a spectator-based game to have. While streaming it myself, I did have a slightly larger audience than normal, but the majority who did watch and participate didn't bother sticking around for very long. Oh god, you're gonna kill me! You're gonna kill me! So, was buying Choice Chamber a bad choice on my part? Not really, it's an interesting look at what could in the future be a big part of games, and at just under 7 quid it's not a bad little purchase if you fancy a bit more audience interaction in your streams. You have chosen wisely. Well that is it for this week, but thanks for sticking with us through bad running jokes and poor sportsmanship. Mm. Thanks for subscribing and do give us a thumbs up too. Yep, and in return we'll give you one back. See? Yeah. Well that's that's fair. What, how would you describe this Wimble then? What's your kind of uh, I your, really need your to, pitch? I really need to work out a simple way of saying it. But it's basically, <laughs> it's a 2D procedurally generated Burglary simulator. Excellent. I can't even say the word burglary properly. So I'm <laughs> I'm really tying that picture slightly. Yeah, <laughs> stealing simulator.